More than one million wild animals are killed each year illegally. Poaching is a major threat to our country's wildlife. I'm Tom Barry. I'm an actor with a desire to preserve living space for wildlife. The Humane Society Wildlife Land Trust does just that, works with private landowners to protect wildlife to preserve natural habitats. To learn more or to work with the Humane Society Wildlife Land Trust, call 800-729-SAVE. That's 800-729-SAVE or visit wildlifelandtrust.org. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to Storyteller's Campfire on the Golden Ark of Treasures. This is your host for this evening, Charlie Checkers, where we will share how knowledge leads to understanding and wisdom. But before we begin with that discussion, a few quick announcements. For our Writer's Circle segment coming up on May 10th, I will be hosting this show discussing The the Wolves of Willoughby Chase. It's a children's novel by Joan Aiken, first published in 1962. On Tuesday, May 12th, at 12, we have our Campfire Musician segment with Matthew Sabatella and the Rambling String Band with Rich Gelhausen. On Wednesday, May 13th, Isabella Hart will host for us the Author's Voice Program for Taddy, the Lonely Monarch de Lorraine. This is a book that all ages can enjoy because of the remarkable artwork, which is from Real Watercolors by the artist Dorothy Heron. And the story is excellent as well. Now, we originally announced that the Charlie Checkers show would debut earlier in May, but the debut date is now set for May 19th. The Charlie Checkers show is a compendium of reviews for independent films, musicians, books, and I will be featuring also on the show the music of up-and-coming jazz musicians on the show. I am so excited to have our listeners listen to this fresh and um, rewarding show. I am very looking forward to it. If you want to learn more, you can visit at thecharliecheckershow.com. On Wednesday, May 20th, Lady Sayla and Carol P. Roman will give everyone a preview of the latest Captain No Beard book series. And then our, on our rare book series on May 22nd, Lady Sayla Sajuris will be showing, we'll be, we'll be sharing My Lady Wind from an 1896 book from our very own library collection which is part of the Golden Rod book. May 24th is the Poetry Wheel, and I will be um, hosting for that. Then on May 26th, Rich Gelhausen, um, John Knuckles, uh, author of The Big, Grit and Blind Trust, and he is on his international book tour, and he will be sharing some highlights of some of his experiences as a writer of the trilogy. Isabella will be hosting for our our children's program on Wednesday, May 27th. Now, on this show, she will be sharing about our summer reading parade and our first book on the parade series, which will be a periodic shows throughout the summer. But the show will feature books that kids can read during the upcoming summer vacation and activities that coincide with the books they're reading. It's going to be an excellent, fun show for all our listeners. Now, because of our new shows that are launching in June, we will be hosting another fireside chat on May 31st to make sure that everyone hears the lineup for June. Also, we're excited about Rich Gale Housing hosting his new show, on, <clears throat> excuse me, On the Line, which is a public interest news show. It will be featuring human and public interest stories. For every show featured on our flagship station at 12 o'clock, it will be rebroadcasted for our evening 8 p.m. on Saturdays, in addition to our regular scheduled times. So the station is XRQK in Los Angeles. airs Tuesday at noon and 8 p.m. and on Saturdays at 8 p.m. Well, those are our short announcements. Now for a short commercial break.
Whoa, a digital music player. Thanks, Mom. Glad you like it. We can finally toss out that old massive stereo. Mom, you can't just throw out electronics. They need to be recycled or donated. Recycled? Like aluminum cans? Yeah. You just go to greenergadgets.org, enter your zip code, and it tells you where the nearest certified recycling center is. Um, I knew that. Okay, Mom. Recycling electronics is as easy as buying them. Log on to greenergadgets.org to find electronics recycling options near you. Welcome back to our Golden Ark of Treasures in progress. This is Charlie Checkers hosting for this evening. And today we're talking about knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. So when I was researching for this show, because I chose to use the Bible, as it is one of the oldest and longest continually running manuscripts in the world, which also became one of the world's first sources of study books, which gave the masses standing in wisdom. Now, Job was one of the wisest of all Orientals, and people sought him out for his wisdom, which, of course, he credits God as his teacher. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, Job not only studied the scriptures, which was orally passed from generation to generation, but when you read his words, he studied also creation. Now, I'm sure you find it as interesting as I do how this ancient example did what scientists are doing today studying all forms of plants and animals and bios of every field to help us using this information to advance humanity and the technology of today. For example, like the study of ants or bees and their engineering feats and how they all work together in unity for their own ecosystem. I also found it very interesting using the Bible today that I wanted to have the most accurate translation of the Bible. And as I Googled that, The result was the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, published by the Watchtower and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. I thought that was very interesting. This translation you can read online as well, and it's such a joy because it's so easy to read. Written in the modern English, the way we speak today. And of course, the easier something is to read, the more desire you have to read it. Your reading increases. That leads to more reading and more gathering of knowledge. But what is our goal when we are gathering knowledge, not just to read? The dictionary defines knowledge as this. The fact or condition of knowing something with familiarity gained through experience or association. Knowledge as it applies to facts or ideas acquired by study, investigation, observation, or experience. So, when you're armed with that knowledge, what do you do with it? All that work to investigate, to study, these are action words. It takes real effort. As brought out in Proverbs 2, 4 through 6, quoting, If you keep searching for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of Yahweh, or Jehovah, And you will find the knowledge of God. For Yahweh or Jehovah himself gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and discernment. Excuse me. So no matter what you want to learn about, what you want to research, and in this day and age of technology, of course, the search engines available, Google, and you have um, Wikipedia, it's easier than ever. But don't you agree it still takes time? Still takes effort. So, for example, if someone gave you a map that said that you had buried money or treasure in your backyard, you'd take a shovel, would you just dig a single hole? And then if it wasn't there, you'd give up. Or or would you do like me and go to that rental station at the in town, rent that backhoe and dig with a big toy and find that treasure? Because it's there. You know it's there and you'll find it. It's the same with anything you want to find out about, anything you want to learn, 
You take in knowledge, you investigate, you study the subject, you find the treasure. Now, what are you going to do with all that information, that knowledge, that treasure? Now, are you going to go on your shopping spree? Waste it, just go buy whatever you want to? Or, because you took that much work and that effort to find that treasure, carefully count it out, take the time to plan how to spend it wisely, maybe put some in the bank, maybe contribute to to others you know of need, then buy what you need out of it first, need first, then you want. Comes the understanding of what you've learned from the knowledge that you have gathered. In Proverbs 8, 4 through 11, starting with verse 4, to you, O people, I am calling. I raise my voice to everyone. Verse 5, you inexperienced ones learn shrewdness. You stupid ones acquire an understanding of heart. Paragraph 6, listen, say, is important. My lips speak what is right. Verse 7, for my mouth softly utters truth. My lips detest what is wicked. Verse 8, all the sayings of my mouth are righteous. None of them are twisted or crooked. Verse 9, they are all straightforward to the discerning and right to those who have found knowledge. Verse 10, take my discipline instead of silver and knowledge rather than the finest gold. Verse 11, For wisdom is better than corals. All other desirable things cannot compare to it. So let us ask ourselves this question, listeners. Is the Bible still practical for our use today? Yahweh or Jehovah is actually the basic source of knowledge. Life, of course, is from him, and life is essential for anyone having any knowledge. Furthermore, God created all things, so human knowledge is based on a study of God's handiwork. God also inspired his written word from which man can learn the divine will and purposes. Thus, the focal point of all true knowledge is Yahweh or Jehovah, and a person seeking it out ought to have a fear of God that makes him careful not to incur Yahweh or Jehovah's displeasure. This fear, such a fear, is a beginning of knowledge. Such one in position to gain accurate knowledge. Whereas those who do not consider God readily draw wrong conclusions from the things they observe. Now we all know our listeners um, how there's so many help, self-help books, manuals, etc. to count, too many. And of course they have human thinking. And as we have learned, humans can change their thinking and minds quite often. I am only 51 years young, and for example, I remember a famous doctor in the 60s and 70s that had a lot of advice about how to raise your children. Years later, as he learned more, gained more knowledge, he changed his thinking. And there are many numerous television shows, how to help with relationships, marriage, how to raise your children. But as imperfect humans, the more we learn, the more we progress, so our thinking is always changing, evolving. Not so with God's thinking. It has has, and always will be the same. The Bible being inspired of God, it says of itself, 2 Timothy 3.16, 